In this video, we provide the solution to question number four for practice exam number four for math 1210, in which case we're asked to find the most general antiderivative of the function r of theta equals cosecant theta times cotangent theta plus two times e to the two theta. So if we look at this piece by piece, since we have a sum of two functions, we have to find their antiderivatives individually. So let's first look at cosecant theta times cotangent theta. Now the temptation is to be like, oh, the antiderivative is cosecant, but that's not exactly right. Um, if you take the derivative of cosecant theta, you actually get negative cosecant theta cotangent theta. Um, and that's not exactly what we have right here. Now, by antiderivative rules, if you take the derivative of negative cosecant theta, that'll equal negative negative cosecant cotangent. So a double negative is positive. You get cosecant theta times cotangent theta. So that's exactly what we want. This thing is going to pull up to become a negative cosecant theta. The issue here is that when you take the derivative of secant, you get positive secant times positive tangent. So we might conflate the two. The antiderivative here is going to be a negative cose cosecant of theta. What about the other part? What about this 2 uh, times e to the 2 theta? Well, the antiderivative there, by the usual sort of reverse chain rule in this situation, you could use u substitution, I suppose, although it's a topic you probably haven't learned by now. Uh, but this this is one this is an elementary one enough that we could check that you're going to get that the antiderivative is e to the two theta. So you put those things together, your antiderivative r of theta, it's going to look like negative cosecant theta plus e to the two theta plus a constant. Don't forget that plus constant because we need the most general antiderivative. So that would give us as the correct answer choice f. Now at the very least. If, you're, if you do struggle with antiderivatives, hopefully you're pretty good at calculating derivatives, right? So what you could do is you could go through each of these options one by one and calculate their derivative and see which happens, you know, which one is, which is the correct one. Like if you're like, how did you get the antiderivative two e to the two theta was e to the two theta? I still struggle with that. I'm not very good. You could actually take the derivative of each of these six options and go from there. Now you are looking for the most general antiderivative. So if there's no plus c, that is if the plus c is missing, you can throw those out automatically and you could take the four remaining answers and calculate their derivatives and see which one's the correct so it's kind of working the problem backwards but that is a legitimate strategy for this multiple choice question although if you are comfortable with computing antiderivatives it's probably faster just to go with the antiderivative instead of working all four answers backward